The Sydney Opera House turns 50 in October. So here are some of my favourite photos that plot the history of our world famous sails. This is where it all began, among the rubble in early 1959, when the Fort Macquarie tram shed was detonated to make way for the new cultural centre. Here's Premier Joe Carl on the day building started on March 2nd, 1959. Notice he's screwing in the plaque with a trowel. Here's that same trowel, a gift from the Danish designer Jorn Utzen, which is still kept in the Carl family home and used as a birthday cake slice. Some of my favourite photographs have come from the lucky few who got to go on site during construction in the 1960s. These are some rare family snaps taken in 1965 by former Arabs engineer Ron Thayer. The man in the hard hat here with his family is a young Irish engineer called Peter Rice, who went on to help design the Pompidou Centre in Paris and the Lloyds Building in London after our Opera House. I love this photo of architect Anita Levy, a silhouette shot when she was pregnant in 1970. Hard hats and safety equipment were as rare as women working on the site, which is why Vivian Patterson snapped this shot of her colleagues who mainly worked in demountable offices. This is Diana Massara, an interior designer who was sitting in one of the chairs she helped design for the concert and opera halls. When they renovated the interiors, the original woolen fabric was recycled to create a collection of clutch, tote and toiletry bags by Tasmanian designer Lynn Helliwell. Singer John English was among the performers at 2SM's 1979 Rocktober Concert of the Decade at what's believed to be the largest crowd gathered on the forecourt. But the image etched deeply in the minds of most Australians is the 1996 Crowded House Farewell Concert, which ended up not being a farewell concert at all. They came back to perform on the very same spot 20 years later. Who could forget photographer Spencer Tunick's cheeky gathering of 5,200 bare bums for Sydney's Mardi Gras Festival in 2010? We all have memorable moments outside the building, but my favourite indoor moment was the time I got a walk-on role with the Opera Australia Chorus of La Boheme. I was a little girl on this boat regalia on opening day on October 20, 1973. Since then, I've had a host of happy memories at Australia's best known building, including the launch of my book about the people who built this place. It's also a great backdrop for family snaps and for grand occasions like Bob Hawke's memorial service, which I covered in 2019. You can see me here on the monumental steps, filing the story when the crowd had long gone. Happy half century, Sydney Opera House. Thanks for the memories.